Like McKinney, North has some playoff pedigree under Coach Daryl Kraft. They've been to the bye district round each of the last two years. And Coach Kraft joins us now. And Daryl, you have a young team that's been forced to grow up fast. And here you are sitting at 14 wins, six losses. It seems like they've done that. We've had a good start to our year. Not really sure, like you said, we're very young, uh, not only in age, but also in varsity experience. And I really wasn't sure how we'd handle that, especially early on. Uh, you know, we faced three teams that have been ranked in the, in the state at the time that we, that we played them. And uh, I thought our kids have done a really good job. If we can just continue out the last 13 games and, and hopefully reach our goal of making the playoffs, we'll have a, a good season. It's a very <clears throat> different team compared to what you had a year ago. Antonio Arnold, you could count on him for 20 points a night. Tone's gone. He's graduated. He's out of your program. And I was struck by something you said before the year that you told your team, we don't have any superstars on this club. Everyone's going to have to score. How has this team been able to adapt to the loss of Tone? Well, that's the thing. Like you said, we, we counted so much on Antonio to, um, to score, for leadership. And coming in, we really didn't have any proven kids that, hey, you know, I'm going to pick it up and be able to score 14, 15 points a, a game. And early on, we, we've had five or six different kids in the, probably the first eight games who had led us in scoring. Now, over the last six or seven games, Julian Perry, uh, one of our sophomores, has kind of stepped out there and taken that lead role as our scorer and our, and our leader. But we still have four or five other guys that can, that can score and, and lead us in scoring on any given night. Perry definitely stepped out of the crowd in the Sherman Holiday Invitational semifinals of that tournament between Christmas and New Year's and against the sixth ranked team in Class 3A Silsby, scores a program record 39 points. What was working for him in that one? You know, Ted, it's kind of funny. I really don't know because of the fact he's one of these kids that, you know, after every game I'll go to Coach Hadley and say, my assistant, you know, you know, Julian just didn't play very well. How many do you have? 15. Like, really? 15? <laughs> He came to, we, we talked about that the last couple of games, and he came to me after that game, he goes, how many think Julian had? I said, probably 18 or 20. He goes, how about 39? I was like, I just couldn't believe it. He's one of those kids that, you know, he does so many things so well, and he's so gifted that he just scores without you even knowing it. And, you know, he, he's able to get to the rack. He's able to uh, uh, knock down threes. He's able to shoot the short jumper. But the thing about him, he's so humble, and he's so willing to give the ball to his teammates I just, I mean, I couldn't believe he had 39, but he's, a, he's just a very special young man. He was counted on as a playmaker off the bench last year as a freshman. That varsity experience obviously served him well going into his sophomore year, but did you expect that he would take this kind of leap, especially here lately, going back into district play where you can count on him as more than just a, a guy that can put up double-figure points, but a guy who can lead your team and almost put up Antonio Arnold-like numbers. I did. I just didn't know if he would be able to do it this early. I mean, I didn't know if it was going to be a sophomore year or junior year. Um, you know, last year, the one thing that sticks out in my mind is we're at Wiley and, and we're down one with about six seconds left, and Antonio bringing the ball up, and he defers, rightfully so, to, to Julian. And Julian knocks down a shot at the buzzer to win the game for us. And I just knew right then that, you know, his, his, his leadership skills, his demeanor wasn't in the locker room. It wasn't all about him. And his teammates, which a lot of them are sophomores also, are, are friends of his. And, and, you know, in the Silsby game, they looked at him. I mean, it got to the point where I, when we called timeout once, Ted, that I said to myself, hey, you know, he can't be the only one that's going to score. And uh, he's just such a, a great young man on and off the floor, great leadership skills, and his teammates just follow him. And, and they, they, I think now they realize, you know, hey, when, when something that we need something for our program or our team on any given night, they're going to look for Julian to try to step out there and, and kind of be that leader that Antonio was for us last year. That Sherman tournament was a grind for your club. Five games in three days. You come out of it four and one. What do you take overall from that event? You know, I was really happy with the way we played because of the fact, like you said, we were off five days for, for winter break. Then we have to go in three-day span and play five games. And, and we were able to get a lot of kids playing time. Uh, different kids were able to step up and score, gain some experience, gain the condition that we may have lost from being off, and, and then play some, some, some good teams. So I was happy. You know, we lost in the, in the championship game to a team that we played earlier and had beaten by 14. Thought we should have won the championship game, but we were just, after the Silsby game, double overtime, uh, we were just exhausted. And, and I don't want to make an excuse because we, we still should have probably won the game. But I, I was very, very happy with uh, the way we competed, and you know, especially the, the semifinals game. There was a couple times that 
our kids could have quit, and they just kept on fighting and found a way to win. And so I was very, very happy with them. That tournament interrupted the district schedule, which got underway five days before Christmas. You beat Rockwall Heath 70-60 to 60 after you trailed the Hawks by 21 points in the second quarter. What was the difference in the second half? I talked to our kids at halftime, and, you know, we just didn't come out ready to play. Uh, we went zone against them, watched them film. They didn't really shoot it that well against other opponents. Uh, went to some of their games and saw them in person. And, and then against us, they went 8 of 10 in the first uh, half at, at the three-point line. So we said, you know what, we're going to scrap that. We're, we're definitely capable of playing people man-to-man -man and, and trying to turn up the, um, the speed of a game. But as young as we are, we're also prone to make some mistakes in the half court. So halftime, I just said, you know, we're going to go up there. We're going, we're going to press them. We're going to try to turn them over. We're going to speed the game up. And we were able to do that, got on a run, felt good about ourselves, and we were able to find a way to pull that out. You have a newcomer at guard joining Perry in the backcourt, Bryson Brown. He was on your junior varsity last year. He's becoming a key contributor for you, scoring in double digits several times this year. What have you seen from him? If I had to say there was one player that has surprised me the most, uh, I would say it would be Bryson Brown. He has played so well throughout the year. Um, you know, I wasn't really sure what we were going to get because he was coming off the JV. And then some of our other kids that we have on our team at least got some varsity experience. But Bryson was on the JV the whole time last year. Uh, he's very athletic, uh, about 6'2", can shoot the ball from outside, can get to the rack. Uh, I, he's just been a very, very pleasant surprise, works hard, uh, wants to get better on a daily basis. And he's just, like I said, just been a surprise where he didn't start the, at the beginning of the year, and now he's been inserted into our lineup where he's a, a starter almost on every, every night. And while Brown is a newcomer to the varsity, Zan Ridley has been with you at the varsity for several years now, finally a senior, 6'9 in the middle. He has so much potential. You've been waiting him to make, to make some strides, and he's done that this year. Obviously, you need him as a defensive presence, but he's also scoring the ball more for you this year. What's been the difference for Zan? He's been a little bit more aggressive on the offensive end. You know, he's able to get rebounds, and instead of deferring to maybe people like Antonio or some of the other kids that were on the team over the last couple of years, uh, he's able to go and score. And, you know, one of the things we've kind of concentrated on with Zan is that he is so big that we want him to catch the ball and go toward the hole instead of falling away and taking some shots that probably weren't or ill-advised. Uh, and he's done a better job of that. He's been he's real aggressive, and, and you know, he's just he's been a – a blessing for us as far as in the middle goes because we have to have some kind of presence, offense and defense, and he's able to fill that role for us. Back to District 10 4A this <clears throat> week, and lucky for you, you face the co-champions from this district a year ago in back-to-back -back games. First McKinney in the Crosstown game, and then you have Highland Park <clears throat> at home coming up Friday. This is going to be a gauge of where your team is at, won't it be? Yes, sir. Uh, this week is going to be a very tough week on us. Uh, both quality opponents, but it'll be a, like you said, it'll be a, a good gauge to see where we are. We're going to probably face the two best scores in the district, in the Mutri at McKinney High and then the Allen kid at uh, Highland Park. Uh, but again, I, you know, I try to talk to our kids about not only is this a good gauge for us, this is a, a, a good opportunity. Um, you know, I talked to you about we played three of the state ranked teams in either 3A or 4A. Highland Park's ranked 11th right now in the state. Uh, McKinney High is a rival and has, you know, they're so talented. And, um, you know, so I'm excited. But, again, we can't look till Friday until we get through with McKinney High. And, you know, it's going to be a tough test tonight for us uh, when we play them. Luckily enough for us, we have played some teams that have West Mesquite, Denton, those type of teams that have been able to put pressure on us. And we've handled it fairly well. Uh, no doubt we're going to turn the ball over. And I understand that. And I talked to our teams, uh, team about that. Everybody does. Exactly. But you have to make them pay for them. You know, if, if we can score, and, and that's just like a turnover for them because we're scoring against their press. Now, if we're going to turn the ball, they score. We can now it kind of goes back and forth. So uh, I, I like what we're doing. And I you know, have a lot of confidence in our kids, even though they're young. I think it'll, it should be a really good game. In that Crosstown matchup, we talk about the respect and the friendship you have with Wes Watson of McKinney High. This isn't exactly Kentucky and Louisville with John Calipari and Rick Pitino at odds with each other, but those two nights a year in district play, you want nothing more than for your team to beat Wes's team. No doubt. And the thing is, it, you know, and I know how it's how you guys may look at the media or people in the community, but we need to beat McKinney High because it gives us a better opportunity to, to win a district championship and make the playoffs. Um, and because he's our next opponent, Wes is, you know, very good friend of mine, but we need to beat them, just like he probably think they need to beat us, to get that next step. And, and that's the reason why I think the rivalry 
isn't as blown up as Louisville, Kentucky, or maybe you know Sherman Dennison, is because I think he respects our program. I have the utmost respect for his program, and it's our next opponent that we need to win so we can try to make a playoff spot in, in our district. Daryl, best of luck going forward. We'll see you soon. Thanks, Ted. Appreciate it. Daryl Kraft, head coach of the North Bulldogs. Can't wait for that crosstown showdown. McKinney versus McKinney North, and then North has a big matchup with Highland Park later this week.